Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. This webinar was originally broadcast on October the 11th, 2012, but we had some technology problems. So we're re-recording it today. And unfortunately, we won't have the live question and answers at the end. So the recording will be about 40, 45 minutes in length. My name is Maureen McCabe, and I'm a marketer based in Toronto. As a marketing consultant, I've worked with small business owners, entrepreneurs, and startups. Prior to 2007, when I founded my own business, a marketing consultancy agency, I worked at IBM. And I was there for 18 years. And for some of you, you may know that IBM stands for Idiots Become Managers, and the other is I've Been Moved. So I held 19 different positions in 18 years and worked three years in small business, a year in medium business, and then a year or six months in the uh, internet division where I launched IBM on eBay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the presentation. And we're just going to have a couple seconds of a pause while I bring up the PowerPoint presentation. So as you know, every two weeks, Thursday afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time, uh, the Small Business Center hosts uh, a webinar on a variety of topics. And the objective, the objective is to really get small business owners the skills and the knowledge they need to be successful in their business. So the presentation today is called Video Marketing, Leverage the Power of Video to Drive More Sales. And I have to figure out how to hit the button to get to the next slide. So in today's presentation, what we're gonna do is review the eight money burning marketing mistakes that business owners make that reduce profits. And these are from my website, a free report. And there uh, are a couple that are relevant to today's presentation. We're then going to spend the bulk of the presentation or the webinar on the seven reasons why you need a business video. And these are reasons that you can share with your partner or your management team of why your business needs a business video. We'll then look at the purpose of the video you're going to create to promote your business. Very briefly, we're going to go over some uh, tips to have a great video shoot. And the part two of this seminar will be in April of 2012, where we will really delve into how to film, how to be ready for the video in the video day. We're also going to briefly talk about leveraging your video on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and some Vimeo tips. And I suspect that many of you haven't heard about Vimeo, so I'll tell you a little bit about that video sharing site. And then very briefly, how I got found on YouTube and how a journalist and a uh, television sh show host interviewed me because they watched my video. I referenced the free report, um, Canadian dollar bills, because I'm Canadian, um, $100 bill. And... Um, Really, what I'm trying to do is educate you about two elements that are in the free report. And at the end of the presentation, you'll get the link to request the free report at my website if that's something that interests you, and I hope it does. There are two mistakes that people make that apply to videos. The first one is needs-based selling, or what I call communication skills, and then the brand identity, or online protection. I often refer to this as free insurance. So reason number two of the eight in my uh, free report is called brand identity and online protection. Now I just want to let you know, anytime you see the color red in the presentation, it's a very important point that I'd like to emphasize. So social media may not be a priority now, and it may never be but you still should set up your profiles on YouTube, personal and business, Vimeo, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Twitter, others like Pinterest and Skype. And the reason why you want to do this is because at the point in time when you're ready to start with something in social media, maybe you'll have a video in six months from now, someone else may have taken your company name. We've all experienced this when we go to register the .com or if in Canada you're in the you know, .ca. 
Um, and we've been frustrated because someone actually has our business name or um, words that we'd like to use for our domain name. The same thing applies for all of these social media sites. And I like to say to clients, you know, there might be some pimply-faced teenager in a remote city in the U.S. or up in the far north in Canada that has taken your business name on LinkedIn or on, sorry, not on LinkedIn, on Facebook or on Twitter. And this name that they've taken has got nothing to do with their personal name. They just took a name at random. And unfortunately, you cannot, you know, buy that name from the party who has it on Facebook, unlike that you can go and approach someone to buy the .ca or the .com domain name. Facebook, even if you delete your profile, still keeps it in the archive. So even if you convince this pimply, you know, young teenager boy to take down his Facebook page, not use that name, you can still never get it. Now, just a really quick point is while you're creating your page, you can actually create a vanity URL. I find that many people on LinkedIn, and I'm going to explain what LinkedIn is because I'm finding a number of my clients aren't familiar with it. LinkedIn, I like to describe as the business site equivalent to Facebook. So I, I usually say we all know what Facebook is. We tend to think of it as consumers, although, yes, there are businesses on it. And Facebook is the consumer, and LinkedIn is the business professionals page. So I'm just giving you examples of the URLs. Many people aren't aware that you can actually request or actually set up yourself the vanity. Okay, so when you have time, you can complete the entire profile. And, you know, those are the details like your company description, hy hyperlink with very descriptive names, perhaps to a blog, to your request a free consultation page, in addition to your website. And you can put your logo. Um, but you don't have to do this to initially set it up. All you have to do is, you know, sign up with your Gmail account on Facebook, you know, create a page, and then reserve the slash whatever your business name is. In my case, it's slash McCabe Marketing. Now, I just want to put a little tip was when you're setting up your profile on YouTube, there's an option to hide your age. I would suggest that you do that. It's none of people's business. Now, in terms of branding, as a marketer, I like to talk about branding. And branding is consistency with your logo, with your company image. And your brand is everything from what you communicate, how you answer the phone, what all your marketing materials look like. On that, the wallpaper, the background on Facebook, on Twitter, you can actually create a background that goes beside it and it matches your logo or, or items on your website. And there'll be a couple of examples in this presentation so you can see what I'm speaking about. Okay, so with a video, you can choose to be a leader or a follower. And that's all up to you. I like to say, do you remember when? I recall as a young girl in the 1970s that people would come to the cottage and the men would say to my dad, do you have a fax machine? And it was kind of a bragging right. And they'd go, yes, I do. And then the, uh, the popularity of fax machines moved along, and so people would then say, what's your fax number? So back in 1998, when I was in the IBM Small Business Division speaking across Canada, that was the analogy I gave. Do you remember when? And, you know, 12, 13 years ago, people would nod, yes, I remember. So I said, that's where we're at in 1998. People are saying, do you have a website? And we know today, and everyone just says, what's your website? And it's on your business card. Well, I believe we're into the period where people are saying, do you have a video? There's not yet the assumption that you have one yet. But I've got a red happy face, a smile. Because when someone says, do you have a video? Those that do, they say, yes, I do. And it's on Facebook. And during this presentation today, you're going to learn a number of other places where you can put your video to maximize that business video that you've created to promote your business. Now, video is actually an alternative to a website. So if you're a small business or just a startup, 
and you haven't created your website yet, you can have a video. And you can share it, and I'll get into examples with that. Now, I was shocked when a Toronto real estate agent contacted me in February of this year. And she said, you know, I've watched your videos, I, you know, spent some time on your website. I'd like to take down my website. The cost to really refreshing it or coming up with a whole new one is too expensive. It's just too much to maintain. I'd like to shoot a couple of videos. And, and so that's what we did. We shot a welcome video and then a video about top tips for hiring a real estate agent. So there's seven reasons why your business should showcase your business with a, with a video, right? So every business owner, I believe, and startup, and entrepreneur, and inventor should really get a video. So when we look at the seven reasons, I'm going to spend a lot of time on this particular slide. Okay, so when we look at why you want to showcase your business, the first point, and I really emphasize that with a lot of people, is that with a video, you establish the key messages that you want to convey. With a video, you're building trust and credibility. So what used to be try and buy is now view and buy or view and contact. So think about it for a moment. You've got someone coming to your website. They can read text or they can watch something. What do you think they're going to do? That's right. They're going to spend a little bit more time on your site, and I'll get into details later. Now, the second point, and this is uh, SEO, search engine optimization, mumbo jumbo for some people, conversion tool. Basically, what a conversion tool is, is something that a customer does or a prospect does to reach out to you. For example, video will help you get more phone calls, more requests for pricing, um, free consultation, you know, a straight email, and perhaps filling in a form. The idea is, is after they've invested this time of watching you, they have a sense of who you are, what your products are, and they're more likely to reach out to you. The third point is search engine optimization. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, when someone types in keywords, words that they're looking for in the Google search engine, everybody wants to be on page one. They want to you know, get onto that page one because they think if they could be in the top three, the phone would be ringing nonstop. Well, what Google does, and it's quite interesting actually, is that Google measures and ranks pages, which is the website content, but they also look at pictures, images, and video. So your website will have a chance of coming up 53 times more likely with the video. And this isn't a quote that I'm making up. Forrester Research has said, I'm going to pull it out, with one minute of video, it equals 1.8 million words. Let's say that again. One million, sorry, one word of video is 1.8 million words. Think about it. Do you prefer to watch or read all the details? Probably like me, you skim some headlines and you look for some bullets to get the key message. You can communicate so much more, but more importantly, a video helps with your SEO to be found naturally or organically when people are typing in and searching for businesses like yours. Now, this one is an expression that some of you may have heard before, sticky eyeballs. The first time I heard it was back in 1998. It was um, IBM's small business vice president. He kept talking about sticky eyeballs. And I put my phone on mute, and I leaned over to someone who was also on the conference call behind me. And I said, what the heck is that? And she said, it's a new buzzword. And what it is is referring to people's eyes staying on your website longer. You know, we all know that it's hard to get people to stay on the website. You know, they have what's sometimes referred to as the attention of a digital goldfish. They're just, you know, flitting here and there. And so you need something that grabs them. And again, as I mentioned earlier, people would prefer to watch video. It just gives them that really quick appeal in learning more about your company. So 
If you have a video on the home page, you're going to likely watch it and spend more time on your site than just exiting. And I like to say it, evacuating your site never to return again. Now, if we look at YouTube, many people are aware that YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So some people go into YouTube and search using words that they're looking for, like marketing uh, services Toronto, right? Or marketing strategies startup Toronto. And so what will appear is a list of videos. They didn't go into Google to search. They're actually on YouTube. So when you create your video, you can have it on your website, but you also really have to put it on YouTube because that's what's going to help you get some traffic back to your website. So people will find you on YouTube, watch your video, and then they'll go to your website to learn more. Now, the competition is so important in this day and age. Everyone's saying, you know, what can I do to get ahead? I used to be doing well, and they seem to be, you know, more competitors. It's harder to get new clients to attract new sales. I like to say sales leads. So when you have a video, you're really getting a competitive advantage. You are just not another business with a website. And these stats below are from an SMB group in the U.S. that released a survey in August 2012. This survey was based in the period of March 2012. So these are relatively speaking current numbers. What was interesting for me was how they defined small business, 24 to 99 employees. Usually we think it's 1 to 99. 9% 9 of U.S. small businesses have a video. And if you're a medium-sized business, which is 1,000 to 999, sorry, 100 to 999 employees, 19% have a video. Now, many of you watching today probably have a lot fewer than 24 employees. And there are no published statistics that I have found on those numbers. But based on my experience working with small businesses since 2007, I would estimate the numbers are probably about 3% of truly small business, the startups, the 1 to 10 employees, the 1 to 20 employees have a video, 3%. So when we talk about getting a competitive advantage, if you have a video and the other 97% of your competitors don't have a video, you have an advantage. Because as we've learned, and I'll continue to give examples throughout the presentation today, that when you have a video, people spend more time on your website. And that's what you want them to do, to get to know you. People buy from people they like. That was a fundamental sales line that we were taught and really believed in when I was at IBM in sales. And you know that. You buy and work with people that you like. So if they have a chance to meet you online before they pick up the phone, perhaps meet you, or hear about you through word of mouth, there's a bit of credibility that you cannot underestimate. 3% is my estimation, and I'm sure it's not that different in the U.S. or the U.K., as I understand most of the viewers are in the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. Now, number eight, I know it's only called Seven Reasons Why You Need a Business Video. And in fact, I recorded a video on my site that talks about these seven reasons in greater detail. But I'm going to add a number eight, and it's called media interviews. Imagine being contacted for a TV, radio, newspaper interview. Why? Because you have a video. Imagine being found on YouTube. Why? Because you have a video and you posted it on YouTube. So your website can have all kinds of relevant information about your services, your products, your clients, your client's profile. But the video can capture the media for a number of reasons. It's easy for them to listen rather than just read. Two, they can actually see you. How would you look in their eyes on a TV interview? Seeing is believing. 
Now, in my opinion, video clinched the deal twice for me. I got an interview with Canada's largest national newspaper called the Toronto Star, and I was interviewed on Canada's top TV network, and there's two networks in Canada, CTV. In both cases, the uh, journalist um, watched my video. The first one, I'll get into a little bit details later if there's time, but essentially she was on YouTube watching a video that was going viral. So she was asked to write a story on this viral video. She's in Toronto. So she Googles, or sorry, doesn't Google, she stays on YouTube, uses some keywords like Toronto small business, startup, marketing, consultant, expert. And up pops my video. She watched it and she picked up the phone and called me. She didn't even go to my website. The second uh, journalist Googled small business Toronto marketing companies in Toronto. She, you know, saw a number of companies. She looked at their site and she told me I was the only one that had a video on the homepage. But I wasn't the only company contacted. So media interviews can help you with a video, but it's not guaranteeing you an interview. However, that being said, I have a client who's a psychotherapist in downtown Toronto, and he has a video. And Alan Fraser has been contacted twice by the media within the si first six months of his new website with a video on the homepage. The first time, he was interviewed on the 6 o'clock news, which is prime time. And the second time, he didn't respond quickly enough to the journalist and didn't have the opportunity to be interviewed. Website expectations. Um, so many people contact me, and I'm sure you may be in the same situation. You have a website, but you're not getting very many sales leads. And so I call this the bounce or the evacuation rate. When people stay less than 10 seconds on your website, it's because you aren't saying anything that immediately captures their interest, that gives them a reason to stay. Now, if you're finding 40% of the people are actually staying on your website, that's very good. Now, if you find that 50% are staying, that's also good. But when you start to see that 60% of the people are leaving your website, never to return, that's why I use the word evacuation. It's not good. And if you're in the 70 to 90% that people leave your website within the first 10 seconds, you've got serious problems. Now, with video on your homepage, we're not changing anything of your existing content, but we put a video on your homepage. Visitors stay longer. I talked about those sticky eyeballs. So let's look at how it's different. Instead of having a 10 second measurement for the bouncing or people jumping off your website, it's now closer to 20 seconds because they'll start watching a video. Now what's fascinating is about 25% of the people will watch the video up to 20 seconds. So you've got to give the best information, the most compelling information in the first 20 seconds. And I have to share with you, if you want your company logo and music in the background and this kind of stuff, you don't need three, four, five, six seconds to do that. Just start with the person speaking or a very quick shot, an intro shot, and then get your logo and the person's name, and the video starts immediately. So you're starting with educating or uh, sharing your insight on the video. So no fancy openings because people are only going to give you, you know, 20 seconds to watch. Now, what's fascinating, like I'm really excited by the statistic, is almost half the visitors that start watching your video will actually watch it for one minute or longer. So that's why they tend to say short videos are good, you know, two minutes, 90 seconds, two minutes, three minutes. But half the visitors will stay there for one minute or longer. So when I talk about getting staying power, on your website or sticky eyeballs, video can help you get that kind of result. And that's why I say with a well done video, just not any video, you have to think about your business, your professionalism, and having a video that truly reflects that. 
Okay, so here are some confidential statistics from me. Um, and this is McCabe Marketing Experience. I got a, a, my first website back in 2010. And so video wasn't on my game plan. And so therefore it wasn't in the top navigation. My video gallery was under the about page. And I found based on people contacting me, that's prospective customers contacting me, about 20 or 25% of the people had watched the video, which I understand talking with other, you know, marketing consultants and, you know, attending SEO conferences, that kind of thing, is that that was a good number because people click on the about page and they see the drop down of the different pages that you have. And so video gallery, you know, is one that entices them. Now, there's a couple of comments there. First, and this is a general web stat, website stat or statistic, is that if you look at the way visitors view the pages on your website and the order that they view it, you can use a free tool on Google Analytics. And it enables you to look at the what they call the visitor flow. If you don't have Google Analytics, please contact your web person to help you get that set up. It's a really important free tool that gives you amazing statistics from how long do people stay on your website. Remember I talked about that 10% people evacuating or bouncing off your site. Now, when we look at statistics of how people are visiting your site and what pages, these are general industry standards in terms of statistics. People start on the home page. They go to your services or product page. So they look at, you know, maybe a couple of different services pages. And where do they go next? To the about page. Before they're ready to spend their money or make a phone call to, you know, talk to you, request pricing, they want to know who the heck is this company. And so, therefore, if you don't have uh, a website that enables you to put, you know, the, the video gallery in your top navigation, then putting it under the about page is, is the next best option as well as in the footer. Now, I had a new site redesigned and launched in January of 2012. And there were some fundamental changes to the you know, complete redesign, the whole architecture. But because we were designing it from scratch, we were able to put my video on the home page. And the layout of my website, and I'll give you some examples, will show that on every single page in my website, I have a video. As well, I have a video gallery under the About page. I don't have it as a separate um, item in the top navigation, but I recommend it to my clients if they have enough room. Because usually you only have you know, maybe six, seven tabs at the top. There's a finite amount of space. Now here are real statistics about McCabe Marketing. This is the new site. If they watch the entire video on my homepage, which is about three and a half minutes, they almost always hire me. This is people, they've watched the video, they call me, they send me an email, or they request a free consultation and send in a form. If they have watched two videos, they always hire me. And I don't say this with arrogance, but they've watched me talk to them for about seven minutes, giving them ideas of what I can do and work with them. So two videos, I know when I start probing on the phone when someone initially contacts me, as soon as I hear two videos, now it's just a question of closing the sale. When they watch the video that I have, seven reasons why you need a business video, they always hire me for a video project. That is, help them do their first video or a series of videos. Okay, so we then go to the next slide. Here's my uh, website. I just want to point out a few things to you. Okay, we've got the logo in the top left-hand corner and the top right-hand corner is the phone number. Just a little plug for phone numbers in the top right-hand corner. If you don't want people to call you, then don't put your phone number there. Why are you making it difficult that people have to then go and find the contact button and, you know, open that button to call you? So we have banners with, you know, needs-based questions. We have, you know, small business marketing on the left side and, you know, my information. But on the right side, the first thing you see is the video gallery, 
with a video. There's a headline for the video, and then there's a couple of short sentences below the video. Now, not every business will open, or not every you know, business person will open your video, and here's why. In some industrial areas, business areas, even though you have high-speed internet, it's a very slow download time. If you're a consumer business, so it's business to consumer, and I'm gonna give you a specific example. If you were looking at declaring personal bankruptcy, or you know, you're going through a divorce and you're looking for a, perhaps a divorce lawyer or go for, going for psychotherapy counseling, you're not, during office hours, gonna to wanna to play a video, right? Because people around you will hear, and this is very personal business. But at least they see the, the subject line of the video and a couple sentences of description. And then following that, I have a customer testimonial, which, which all in the site brings trust and confidence. And I just want to say one thing. I had a welcome video on my website until the CTV, the, the Canadian TV network, interviewed me. And my welcome video was really what I was talking about for you to create which is a welcome to your website, thanks for visiting, here's what we do, here's how we can help you. So the purpose of your business video is something that you clearly have to know and define before you even approach the, the person you want to have them film your video. So I talked about a couple of minutes ago a homepage welcome video. It helps people Stay on your site longer because you're saying something of meaning and you're getting staying power. You can also create a video for educational purposes. For example, you want to educate people about toilet tips. I know that sounds like a funny one, but if you're a plumber and you've got a website, if you have something that people are interested in that solves the problem, here's tips to, you know, what you can do when you have a plugged toilet. Boy, that's important when you need it. You've got some great educational awareness. A number of people like to create videos, businesses, to help their customers in terms of training using your products. Now here's something you can do very inexpensively, is you could create a video on your iPhone or a Blackberry or whatever handheld device you have. That's very, I'll use the word, amateurish. But what you can do is position it with a select number of customers or prospects that you're looking at doing some videos and that they're one of the handful of people chosen to have a look at this video and ask for candid feedback regarding training. First, People love being asked to do something special, to know that they're in a pilot, to know that they're hand chosen. Um, so you're going to get feedback. And let me tell you, you're probably going to be surprised about that feedback. They might say, this is the wrong topic. If you're doing a video to give people help or training about your products, these may be the other items that would be more appropriate. So then that goes back to, getting feedback before you determine what the content is for your video. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. I would love to see more videos for online help. Just think about it. We go into Microsoft Office or whatever version you use for um, um, you know, the Word documents or the PowerPoints. And you, know, you type in a few words and you know, they give you the seven steps of what you have to do. It would be a whole lot easier, I think, sometimes to have that friendly voice walking you through it. Events are a great subject matter for videos. You can promote an upcoming event or fundraiser. So this way it's you know business or you know fundraising, a charity that perhaps you are supporting or your business is supporting. And you can use some footage from last year's event and then talk about this year's. And I'll give you a very specific example. In Canada, the Princess Brick Foundation is the cancer foundation. And I worked with them as a volunteer in the uh, breast restoration awareness group. So when a woman's had a mastectomy, she can get reconstruction, and less than 10% even know they can get reconstruction. 
and only a few uh, percentage, about half of them, actually really pursue it. So our objective was to raise money to then spend it to increase awareness. So what we did was we had uh, two surgeons in Toronto, and they each filmed separately on different days. We had a script, and then we merged, you know, the two of them speaking, so it would change from, you know, screen to screen. Um, and we had some slides inserted as well. We then used that video in an email note when we would invite corporate sponsors to consider sponsoring us and to invite friends and family and coworkers and just about anybody else we knew to attend the fundraising event. And I'm going to show you later an example of what you can do with your closing signature or the email closing to give you some ideas of how to effectively use the video. Okay, politics. We're not talking about conservatives and new Democrats or conservatives and social Democrats, Republicans, or Democrats. We got lots of the various political parties, but there's a whole lot of politics in the office when there's going to be a video. Who's going to be in the video? So for many companies, the president feels that she, or perhaps he, is the best person to be in the video. And as the marketing person, you've got to really, you know, watch carefully how you position this. But even if you're a small business and you're, you know, you have a partner, you have to really go through kind of a checklist. Is this person coachable? You know, are they going to be open to feedback and actually executing or using that feedback? When they speak, do they have marbles in their mouth? Are they difficult to hear? What does their voice sound like? Is it very high and cracky or just grating on your nerves? Do they have an accent? Are they clear to hear? And we'll talk about B roll. B stands for the word background roll option. So let me give you some examples. I have a client who sells hockey socks. He sold 2 million hockey socks since the company was founded in uh, 1985. And he sold them all over the world. And he said to me up front, I want a video, but I know my voice is not great. So I said, no problem. We can get someone that we pay, and we'll get a voiceover. So while all these screens are happening in the background, or all these shots of showing in the factory, making the hockey socks, bundling them, seeing somebody skate on the ice with them, we have a voiceover. Uh, another client that I spoke with uh, ha is, you know, in Canada, has a Canadian company, but he has a bit of a Scottish brogue, and he was very self-conscious of it. And when he taped um, some uh, presentations, and in particular audio uh, educational presentations, he felt that his accent was too strong. So I said, no problem. Let's identify an employee. So that's where I think it's important to look at who is the best person and how is it going to be decided? And how can you subtly, you know, look at who is going to look better on screen? And I'm not talking about the visual, but come across better. You know, has a smile, looks personable. So I'm pausing and letting you think about that. Because it's going to be challenging if you really have this president, he himself, who wants to be in the video. B-roll options. Okay, those are background shots. Let me give you specific examples. Somebody on the phone, reading the book, looking out the window, writing in their hard copy calendar on the Blackberry. So what you can do, and this is what I did with the Toronto psychotherapist, Alan Fraser, that I made reference to earlier, is that Alan in his three minute video is only on camera speaking for about one minute of the three minutes. You know, other times he's looking at this heavy, you know, book, um, you know, shaking the hand, meeting with someone. And the strategy behind that is that people like to see action. They just don't want to see a talking head, like you're seeing right now with me, right? They want to see activity going on, and it keeps their attention. So the way you can structure your video, right, when we're talking about the politics of who's in, Maybe you just have the picture of your president shaking hands, standing at a podium, so he gets to be in the video, or she gets to be in the video, but she's not the talking person. 
Now, what's also interesting is determining which staff are in the video. Staff members can be very effective in giving business legitimacy. However, and this is a big however, few things. One, you've got to get a release from your employee that you can use them in the video. Two, that you're not paying for them, so that's in the release. And three, if for any reason they leave the business, you can still use that video. Now, a lot of people say, I'm just not comfortable about being in the video. No problem. Get your customers to be. Your customers are phenomenal ambassadors. They give you referrals. Why not get them in a video? Sometimes it makes sense to hire an actor and pay them to be your video personality. I'll give you an example. I have a client that does weight loss surgery called the lap band surgery in Canada. And due to the Ontario Medical College you know, for physicians and surgeons, there's a lot of rules and they, they have to be careful. And so we can show patients in the video because it could look like they're endorsing the surgeon. So what we did was we hired two people that were overweight having a conversation, a 14 part video series, asking questions about having this weight loss or lap band surgery. It was great because neither of the people had ever been in a video before. We had hired an agency, a talent agency, to find us some people. And they brought in uh, probably about 10 women and 10 men. And we talked with them, we gave them an overview. We then you know, had them speak with one of the surgeons, film it, and just get that sense of, do they feel comfortable in front of the camera? And what I really like about that video series is that you have two real people, not professional actors, we still paid them, you know, an honorarium, and they come across as wanting to understand and learn more, and basically that's why we created the videos. They were educational videos to learn more about the procedure, Animation is fantastic. I love animation in videos, but it's very expensive. There's price ranges and people usually ask. Rule of thumb, I like to say it's at least three, if not five times more expensive than shooting people uh, in a video. Now, I've created a blog in part two of the webinar series that I'm doing for the Small Business Center coming up in April. Talk about tips to have a great video shoot. And this is true, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a few lines, they are magnified during the video because we have HD high definition cameras and they show every single line. So if for any reason you want to get Botox or any kind of filler, you have to do it two weeks in advance because it takes time for the Botox to get into the lines on your face. Now, I want to talk about the 10 points, but very briefly. Uh, I'll spend a little bit of time on scripting at the, at the end. So we talk about coaching. Are you going to do it yourself or are you going to get help? You have to make a decision if you are going to have a teleprompter so you read a script, which is really tough and I don't recommend. Are you going to memorize your script and half the time you're trying to remember it, you see your eyeballs on the ceiling like I just showed? Or it's more conversational. So a person asks you a question, you're not on the camera, but then you speak. And they, uh, the videographer just you know, captures that answer. Botox we talked about. It's important to decide what the clothes are, what you're going to do with hair, makeup. Yes, gentlemen, you need makeup. And the reason is when you are filming a video, it takes probably about two and a half or three hours to get your three-minute video. You're going to be sweating a little bit, ladies, perspiring or glowing, depending on your terminology. And so you don't want a shiny face or a shiny forehead in the middle of the video because as they film over that two and a half or three-hour period, they're going to take a little, you know, uh, section maybe in the first 20 minutes and then another section when you answer a different question particularly well, you know, in the last two hours. Water and straws, super important. When you're drinking water, if you use a straw, it doesn't mess up your lipstick. 
I know this sounds small, but again, you've watched TV shows, right? And the necklace on the person moves from here to here, and you can tell it wasn't sequenced. Well, the same thing with your makeup. A good night's sleep, really important, because you don't want to show those bags and being on time for the video. Yes, I've had two clients show up really late, and then we were compressed for time. Now, let's talk about the script and the talking points. Okay, reason number four from my eight money-burning marketing mistakes that reduce profits, the number one reason in that report is needs-based selling and communication skills. Now, this is in the report, so you can request it later, but your script needs to be talking in terms of needs, dreams and aspirations, or an immediate benefit. Okay, so imagine the freedom when your marketing goes on autopilot and the sales leads come in automatically. Imagine that. You've probably captivated the person in the first six or seven seconds of your video. So it's important to speak in the words of your prospective customers or you won't reach them. So that's a key point about your script. And we'll go into a lot more details in part two of this webinar series in April 2012. Number 11, I put down as a joke because I had top 10 tips, but as a result of my interview on uh, CTV, I call number 11 now the manicure. I didn't realize that they were going to ask me to demonstrate some things on my PC to show about keyword research with Google and to show good practices on a website like your telephone in the top right-hand corner. And so I was grateful in the sense that I didn't have my nails painted or chipped, but you have to think what parts of your body are being shown, right? In terms of if you're going to do your office in the video, like have a background of your office, you need to have your desk clean. You've got to decide what's behind you. Okay, so here's a question that we asked in the live presentation um, in October. How many videos do you need to have to have a video gallery? One, two, three, or four plus videos. The answer is going to surprise you. One, you can have video and you start with your video gallery. You can add more later. I only had one video for about two years, but I still called it my video gallery. Two, where should the video gallery be located? Well, we talked a little bit about that before. If you can put it in the top navigation of your website, you can call it gallery. You don't have to have the word video gallery. You can put it under the About page, like I did, because I didn't have the room to put it in the, the top navigation. And absolutely put it in your footer. And many businesses do not have a footer. Um, that's a topic for another presentation. But you really should have a footer because it helps people find pages on your site. And you have something called cross-linking, and it helps with your SEO. And anything that helps us get onto the first page of Google, we all want to do. Okay, so here's an example of a video gallery happens to be mine. So uh, up in the top that you can't see that I excluded was the, um, the logo and the phone numbers on the right corner. Um, I don't have a full banner going across my site. So we get into the video gallery. you got to give it a name. Call it what it is, video gallery. You have a headline. So mine is showcase your business with a powerful sales tool. Create a marketing video. And I have, you know, three sentences. You'll look at the format. I have three videos across, so I don't have a right-hand column or a left-hand column, which people often have in the basic design of their website, which I do on the other pages. I felt it was more important to have three videos going across the page than just two videos. It reduces scrolling. You'll see there's the title for each video, then you have the video, and then there's a short description after the video. When we go to the next slide you'll see my other three videos so you'll see and I want to talk a little bit about clothes and I'll talk a lot more about this in part two in April you see that there's good color bright colors right so you see the welcome video you see the pink suit and then you see the black suit with a pink shirt that was my first video before I really learned about dressing two you have the orange suit you happen to have a jacket with a red top and then you have a dress with a scarf. So you want to give just a little bit of interest for people to look at things. So you've created a video. Where are you going to put it? On your website. 
we've talked about the home page, the video gallery. You can put it on specific pages throughout the site. And you can use it on your landing page. So for those people that are running an AdWords campaign for pay-per-click, which, which could be on Google, Yahoo, or Bing, you can put your video there. And it's very powerful. Again, it gets people to stay longer on your site. Now you've created the video. You have to decide if you're actually going to host the video on your website or you're going to post it on YouTube and then have a feed from YouTube to your website. It's really easy for your web developer to do this. If you want to host it on your website, you got to make sure with the server or the hosting company, there's enough bandwidth they can handle this extra amount of um, time and uh, space that this video will take on your site. As well, this is important, very few people know about this, is when you have a video on your website, you can actually create a video sitemap which helps with Google and in indexing your site. As an aside, you can also have an image sitemap. Most developers don't volunteer at this, so you need to ask for it. So when you're creating a new site, you're redesigning your site, define your navigation with video in mind. Now, I talked earlier about how you can leverage your video. Here's an email signature that I use. So, you know, I've got my name, my full name, my company name, my tagline, generate more profits. And then I have, you know, the phone, the email, the website, some social media links, which I didn't think was important to include here. But then you see a picture of me, and it says, grow your business faster. That's the text on the screen during um, one section of the video. And so this is just a, like a JPEG or a .png file that you incorporate into your email signature. And then below it, I have a sentence that says, thanks for watching my video. They can click on the words, my video, hyperlinked. And it says, welcome to McCabe Marketing. Learn how to increase your sales leads. So I have uh, six videos. For, yeah, because I had one in 2011, I created four, and then I have my CTV interview. And so I have different signatures that I use when I send out email notes. So, for example, if I had a free consultation with a startup business, guess what I send them? My startup video. When I've had a consultation on the phone and I'm probing, like you do, how did you find me? What words did you use? I like to find out, did they watch a video? If they did, it's actually the homepage video. And so therefore, I'll send a different video as a clip. If they've talked to me, for example, about helping them create a video, you know that I have a video called Seven Reasons Why You Need a Business Video. I put that in. OK. You want to leverage your video on other sites other than YouTube. Vimeo is a video sharing site. It's much cleaner and nicer when you have that on your website versus YouTube. But the key reason why you want it, it gives faster download, download times. And that's important because if it takes too long for items to download on your website, you and I know you leave the website. Now Vimeo has a basic or free membership or they have a premium membership for $60 a year. So at the beginning of the presentation, I talked about setting up your social media profiles, right? Just reserving your name, the business name, an email address, and then when you're ready to use that particular social media platform, your name is there. So set up your Vimeo profile as well as your YouTube profile. Now, you know, we all know, you know, YouTube's the second largest search engine in the world. You know, great source of um, people finding you. Google actually has a keyword research tool that you can use to find what phrases people are using. But most people aren't aware that YouTube has a keyword research tool, which is words or phrases that people are searching on YouTube. And those results are different than the Google research tool. But the key benefit that I like about YouTube is in the production stage. You're going to see multiple drafts of your video. And you're going to cut things out. You're then going to decide what's the text you want displayed on the video. And 
it's really a pain, I'm going to be direct when I say that, to get, you know, a, an email note that you have to link to another site and then download it. And then imagine you're getting two or three people in your company to do this. You can set up on YouTube your video and just indicate private, not public. So only the people that get the URL that you send in an email note can actually go to your channel, your YouTube profile, they call it a channel, and look at the video. And of course, we're going to leverage the video by letting everybody know on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus that you have one. So I talked earlier about branding and consistency. This is an example of a YouTube profile. You have normally white in the background. In my case, you see the blue shade, which is my exact shade of blue. And then you have a key message, marketing strategies and plans, attract more customers, call to action, phone number, and then you've got the logo. This is the about page about McCabe Marketing, which is my channel, or you would call it a profile, on YouTube. I want to point out on the right-hand side a couple of really quick things. It says about McCabe Marketing, Toronto Marketing Services, and I have my little commercial. And then below, if you can see with the resolution, it says Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. You can have a link to all of the different social media platforms, your website, your blog. How I got found, um, I have a blog called Three YouTube Tips to Leverage the Power of Social Media, and that was referring to the viral video um, that was taking off. The Toronto Star journalist was asked to write a story, and I got contacted. So I was found on YouTube. She didn't Google. Uh, interviewed in the, the, um, on the TV show, the Patty Lovett Reed Show, uh, Canada's largest uh, TV network, um, again, because of video. The Small Business Center has bi-weekly seminars that are free. And I'm using the word free for now, or the phrase free for now because obviously the quality of their videos, me excluded today, present company excluded today, really are such that, um, you know, I think many of us would pay a small fee uh, to watch the videos or a small monthly fee. You can visit them at their website, smallbusinesscenter.com, on Facebook, on Twitter, and now I'd just briefly like to mention the free marketing report that I referenced earlier. You can request it on my website by going to mccabemarketing.ca and scrolling to the bottom of the homepage, or you can just type in mccabemarketing.ca slash free report. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you found a point or two that, were, uh, that is relevant that will help you create the ideal video marketing company product that you're going to promote or service that you're going to promote. Good luck, good sales, thank you so much.